Welcome to episode 69, Johanna Brown. This episode brought to you by Bunsen Burners. Bunsen Burners. Fire and teenagers, what could go wrong? Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space, you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. I recently joined as a member, and you can too. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with the advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And please put unprofessional development in the How Did You Hear About Podgo? That will give us a little finder's fee. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very exciting scientific episode of Unprofessional Development. I'm Tedisco. And I'm Mealy. And today we've got with us Johanna Brown. And I had, didn't look it up. Visions of Johanna. What a wonderful Bob Dylan song. So I, no, I can't remember the lyrics, but I just know. But, they, but these visions of Johanna, it's a really, it's kind of like a, I don't know, weird psychedelic song, right? Ish. I am named after it. Are you My really? Are hippies. Oh, That's yeah. cool. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay. And, and what percentage of people actually know that when they and ask you that question? Very few, I would think. Very, very few. Uh, okay. I've probably had about 20 people. Okay. In your, li- in your lifetime. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, really, aren't you honored to be one of the 20? Yes. I've, yes. Thank you very much. You know, obscure Bob Dylan songs for a thousand dollars, Alex. Or are you um, today, Joanna? Hopefully, hopefully LeVar Burton next, by the way. We keep pumping Ooh, that thing. Me too. Team LeVar. Um, it's <laughs> 75 here. I live in North Idaho. I teach across the border in Washington. And so it's been cold. It snowed three inches in my house last weekend. So I'm oh just goodness. happy to have this. Yes. Snow. That's very, very nice. Yes. It's, we didn't get snow this year. No, we did not know so in, in our part of North world. Carolina. We, we did not get any. Well, my wife claims she saw flakes on the way home one day. She's like, I saw some flakes. Could be. We talk about snow like you guys talk about Bigfoot. Yes. I, was <laughs> <laughs> I swear I saw it. It yes. was there. Yes. Yes. Drinking a it might exist. Um, so anywho, so, you know, in my, my multiple, um, by the way, it's getting harder to do these to disco, just so you know. So if you ever come up with some, go for it. Oh, I have a bunch. Oh, cool. Put them on like a doc in, in, in the show. The different random ways I have people describe their, their journey through education, because we've, we've committed to not just like, tell us like where you graduated from and how many years you taught and what the da 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 da. Right. Cause so, we don't care. Honestly. Yes. Well, no, we don't. That's not no, that interesting. Does. So it's more fun <laughs> to do it this way. So I know you teach chemistry, but I thought that the biology might be where you want to go. So you have your choice. You can either go describe your journey through education, like as like evolution, as you went from a this to a this. And what were the, what, what things did you, um, what your adaptations to natural selection or as a series of chemical reaction and what the new compounds were. So you're ready. It looks like. I'm excited. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Have at Wonderful. it. So I went with reactions because the, I think the biology made more, immediate sense to me, but I thought I have to do chemistry. So, cool. um, and, and it made me think the way you frame this made me think about what actually spurred my changes. Very good. Was what was cool. the catalyst as the chemistry so, people say? Oh, oh, yes, it was a, ca- ah, love a good catalyst. So, um, I actually started teaching older. I'm a career changer, but I first taught at a school for adults uh-huh. in Indiana who, uh, wanted to get their diploma, but had, oh, wow. had left high school. Wow, yeah, that would be so, interesting. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna circle back, as the kids say, to that in a minute. But keep going. It was a lot, and so I I that was my first job. Things I I taught things pretty standardly, but we had more time with them. I had about three hours for each class. They mm-hmm. had fewer classes. We had life coaches, but I just things didn't feel quite right. I was just doing traditional grading and and really caring about them, but it just didn't feel right. So I left there and got the job I have now. And I meet before I even started. I said, I know I want to do standards based grading. Mm -hmm. I want things to be clear. Um, why, why should students do extra work if they already get something? Like, let's, let's do this. So I did that. But then students were being kind of mediocre on every standard. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to get get the standard. Yep. And move on. So I had these students who all were doing like 60% understanding on everything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, ugh. So how, how did we react to that? Well, I went to a mastery base, a one or a zero. In the grade book. So on every standard, you had a one or a zero. Wow. And that was it. Yes. Um, and there was some help in there. There were some supports that, mm-hmm. that brought everybody grade, everyone's grades up just for like what you did in class. Mm-hmm. Um, right. 
And then we went completely asynchronous this last spring. Mm -hmm. It was rough yes. for everyone, I think, yeah, right? Definitely, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and I had students just, I was just looking at a bunch of their answers from last year. I asked students things every Friday uh, and they were just talking about, it just feels like work. I'm just turning things in to turn them in for all my classes. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's terrible. Why are we doing any of this? And so I thought, grades are just off the table. We're not doing grades. So this year, ask students to go on this journey with me of having no grades, just feedback. Um, and a lot of it tied into, I had, I've had some really competitive AP chem classes. Mm -hmm. uh, another way I reacted to that, I read, um, I read some books about culture, not even in classrooms and just have really changed how I try to build culture and work on mental health and how students can work together and figure out how to learn. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where I've where I've gone. And the new compound is, is a system of feedback that isn't perfect, but it's a lot better for most students. Okay. So let's Wonderful. circle back to the, to the adults for a minute, and then we'll get on to the, to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So these are adults that are now trying to get their GED. So diploma, diploma. Okay. So they're getting a real diploma. Okay. So first off, in general, was, did you find that their motivation level was medium high or low? It was a complete mixture. Yeah. So yeah. some of them were there because they were like living in mom's basement and she was forcing them back into school. And some of them were people that were like, okay, I'm trying to finally get my life together. I didn't care before. And now I'm caring. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. There were, there were some people who were very externally pushed and some people who were very internally wanting Interesting. to be there. And, and to this day, I still don't know what an, an adult is. So <laughs> what age range did you ha we, have in uh, your class? It was 18 and up. So I would say a lot of my students were in their 20s and early 30s. But we had some much, much older students, 60s and 70s. That must have oh, been wow. wild. Yeah. yeah. And we had some who we had to, like, they wanted to make sure everything was a secret. Because they had, you know, they had a job and right. their job didn't know that oh, they wow. didn't have a diploma. It was real. Gosh, it, it really changed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to work yeah. there. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I meant that. That was, and you were teaching them science at that point or mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bi biology and earth and space and chemistry. All at the same time? <laughs> no, I had some, Two, those three were my hours. three different classes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I don't know if I would like that or not. Like, but and I think it would be rewarding for the the older ones that were really trying to get something. I would, were there tears at graduation a lot? Yes. Oh my gosh! And everybody's families. It was oh. it was really amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's I, I imagine that would be like that. I, that. That's that's cool. I don't know if I'd be able to handle a three hour class. Like maybe in science, especially with like their labs and things to break it up. But like think about an English class, like just working on an essay for three hours. Oh. I'd lose my mind. No. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I've, nope. I've taken some three-hour classes that were that, that weren't science before, and it was it was um it's rough. You have to you definitely have to take breaks. And yep. um, if it was me though, I would probably at the two and a half hour mark be like, okay, if I just um do the like the last thirty minutes on your own. Just leave out of here. Do do it whenever you feel like it. And I I'm gonna go um you know do something <laughs> else because yeah. <laughs> That's Luckily, just how those I am. Are my first. My first few years of teaching, so you have that like, yeah, fresh yeah. excitement. You're like, three hours is great. Like, <laughs> Ooh, all the energy. Pack it. Yeah. 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 That's pretty awesome. So your students were all older than you were? Yeah, uh, most, many of them. I guess I was 27. Okay. okay. When I started that. So, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you had mentioned that you stopped grading? I know what? <laughs> How does one do that? Well, okay. I and and I want to recognize that grading is one of the last refuges of teacher autonomy. So mm -hmm. I know that some people might be having a visceral reaction right now, and I value that and I understand it. I never but, thought of it that way. I, I, that's my belief. It might not necessarily be true. No, but yeah, no, at a, a lot point. of schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. so how do you stop grading? Have to think about what being objective means and if it's important and if it can honestly be done. And I would challenge any human that one single person can't really be objective. Mm -hmm. And if you write a test, it could be great. But is it actually 
objective? And are you teaching what the person down the hall or in the other state or in the other country is teaching? Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. And for me in science, we're, we're pushing to have students never stop learning, never stop questioning, never stop failing. And I think grades just put everybody into these boxes that causes them to think that, oh, I mastered that. If I forget it later, I'm dumb. If I don't get it right away, something's wrong with me. Or if I we I teach in a district where a lot of people move, there's a university here. So I have students who come to me and they didn't have physical science recently. Mm-hmm. So why should they be punished for not knowing? How can I then just get them to grow a whole bunch instead of worrying about you have to learn these exact things about reactions? It's like, well, let's learn some stuff that maybe the rest of this class learned in ninth grade. It's why should anyone be punished for being where they're at or being who they are? Mm-hmm. So does mm-hmm. that involve kind of building a curriculum for like every kid? That it could be viewed that way. I think that's what the feedback model is. And I release students to not finish things. So I say we we plan to do a math. So I'm still teaching hybrid right now. So half mm-hmm. of my, it's not even half, 35% of them are home all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I decided to do a math unit, a stoichiometry unit in chemistry. Mm, I love stoichiometry. Um, Which and dinosaur too, was that? No, it's, it's, it's Greek philosophy mixed with chemistry is what it is. If very stoic about your ometry. Oh, so don't show any emotions. <laughs> We haven't had tears yet, so I guess we're doing okay. But, uh, with the math, I, you know, I was worried about doing it online, mm-hmm. and we talked about it as a class. And I said, if if you all are going on in any science, this is just a skill I want you to practice here with me in this safe space. Um, and what I've told them too is they're all in such different spots mathematically, and yeah. so I tell them to work to the point where there's a, a struggle. Mm-hmm still try it and get feedback then. So especially if you're at home, just working by yourself, we have some asynchronous days, get to that point, try it, turn it in. Mm-hmm. If it's problem one, I don't care. That That's your differentiation right there. And then other students are blasting through that they want to do them all. Great. But it's, it's where do you get to that struggle where you're trying to figure something out? And I tell them all the time, confusion is learning. Yes. Confusion is not bad. It's no. the signal that good things are going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that your brain is actually doing stuff. Yes. So I would say that's how it gets differentiated for them. And then we do projects and we do labs and they get to pick things that also makes it different for them. But really I'm about figuring out where students can get challenged and mm-hmm. then supporting them at that point. So I'm going to ask a couple things. The first thing is, so how many years did you teach before you started doing this? Seven. Seven. And so... How much more or less work do you find yourself doing now? And do you feel like it'll continue to be that much work? Or do you feel like kind of when you start a subject, you kind of like by year three, four, you kind of hit a groove where it's no longer like um, the learning curve and you're kind of in, in a groove there? I would say it's about the same. Okay. Because part instead of it sounds of- like it could be like a whole lot. It sounds like a little daunting a little t- to me when I, when I hear it. True. But I'm also, okay. So here's what I love. I sit down. I just looked at a bunch of AP chemistry practice things Mm -hmm. and I just went through and I did actually help them score because it's based on the exam, Mm -hmm. but all of my feedback, there wasn't any rubric. There wasn't any like, Oh, now I'm taking off this point. I have no stress for like, Oh, the student's really close, but I can't quite give them a a nine out of 10. So the nuances. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, okay, this is what you did good. This is what you didn't do. Here's how you can, here's what I want you to do going forward. Right. Yeah, And I'm not trying to think about what's fair. I'm just thinking about what that student needs. All right. So we can hear them right now to Disco. They, they're, the people are going, we're required to give per quarter. They, they have, and just use us as an example. We have to give, um, I think it's I forget, seven or eight informal grades and three or four formal grades. And some people, some people have to give a certain amount of things that they have to grade. And some places have, have to have at least have a grade at the end of the quarter or the end of the semester or the year, depending on how it goes. So tell the us some workarounds. Three that- riddles solved by trolls. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So tell us, tell us some, so so the teachers that are freaking out, they're going, well, that sounds interesting or different or fun or um, whatever, but how do I, I can't just not give kids grades because I'll be fired. So what's, what's, what are some of the workarounds that you know? So here's, here's what I did. I made a grade in our grade book 
mm-hmm. called Summative Assessment. It's worth 10 points, and I just gave everybody 10s. Okay. And it is worth 99.99% of their grade. Aha. So they pass. Yeah, everybody's getting an A. And that's what I, t- I said. Th- this is your grades in there. Right. You just need to keep trying. Right. Keep trying. And so, uh, and I said, but I understand parents, families need a tracking system. We need a bit of a tracking communication system because students don't do things. I also do not have any deadlines on work. Okay. Work. Um, right. At all. So, so what I do then is I, each thing that we do, or if it's a week and we worked on something all week, that thing is zero or one. Either you tried and thought hard on it, whether or not you got it done, you got to a point where you Mm -hmm. had confusion and worked through it. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are all just zeros and ones. So if you do them, they're all ones, but they can open up the grade book and look, Oh, I haven't done that for Ms. Brown yet. Or, or I, I need to make sure that I actually, and you weight them 0.01% or or point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what about the kids who aren't trying? What about the kids who should fail? Should a kid fail? I mean, if they just sit there and say like, no, I'm good. And they choose not to do anything. (laughs) Yes. What, 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 how would you handle that? Let me ask it that way. Instead of starting with my supposition. I'm just giving you a hard time. Well, yeah. And sometimes students should not earn credit. And it is one reason I did this. I went so far. I decided to just go to the end of all A's and just see what happens is because it's a year where things are so uprooted anyway. So why Mm -hmm. not just go as far as we can? Um, But, and I have some, I, I have some students who struggled and I, it's really just constant um, communication with me. We've created, um, especially last semester, we're a lot better now. Everybody's doing a lot better. But last semester, I had some students who really were doing that. They weren't doing stuff. They were watching Netflix when we were on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we came up with accountability plans and met every week um, for what they what they needed to do to earn credit. So they just n- needed to know that it was serious. And I did have, I've had a couple of students reach out and say, I really just need that extrinsic grade. And so what I would do is that 10 out of 10 points, Mm -hmm. I would reduce it for the student who had agreed to it. I wouldn't just do this for anybody, Mm -hmm. but about five of them, we had this agreement where if they, if I felt like things were getting wonky, I would email them, CC their families and reduce their grade in that 10 out of 10, just Mm. to give them that. Yeah. Light light, light, light the fire a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of, and a lot of talking to them about why, and I have some students, especially girls, there's so much guilt and shame if they don't do something and then they don't want to talk to me. And then they just get into this whole system mm-hmm. of perfectionism, oh. procrastination. And- <laughs> That's how I failed out of college. Literally. I was like behind and then I didn't want to go talk to my professor about why mm-hmm. I hadn't been to class in two weeks and why I hadn't do anything. And then I didn't go for another week because I, I you know, I just didn't know how to. it better. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> It was, you know, well, it was, it was all good till, I mean, there was, a, there was like this back level, this level in the, in the back of anxiety. And then, um, and then obviously when my parents found out, then that was, then, then it was, then it was a big hot mess. So, um, but. Okay. So let me take it to the other side then. So there's the kids who just, you know, don't try, but I also know that the kids who will put in the bare minimum, right. They want to say like, what do I have to do to pass? Mm-hmm. That's like, I was lazy. I was a completely lazy student. So like, I love this class. And like every day be like, yeah, I'm doing something like I mess around, but like, I wouldn't try very hard. How do you get students to like buy in? How do you, how do you motivate them? Uh, especially kids who might be motivated by grades. Yes. Um, a couple of things I do is I don't put in the one, uh, if they need to make revisions. So things mm-hmm. don't count as done. Um, if, if revisions need to be made, uh, and that was one that helped students who didn't want to go back and fix things and they would just do the minimum, mm-hmm. like mm, your, your answers, you don't have good reasoning. Um, and we talk a lot about reasoning and not, ha- not having to be right, but having to think and make good connections. So there's just this constant barrage from me about how they're communicating and how they're explaining themselves and, I'm talking about how that that's the skill. I don't, if you forget this chemistry, <laughs> fine. Right. I, I yes. will not. You can always watch a YouTube years. video later and, and, and relearn it. Yeah. But you need to be able to think, mm-hmm. <laughs> please. So yeah. Um, and it's been, it's been pretty good. I would say there are just a few, there's 
there's one that just complained about, well, I never know if I'm right because I'm not getting grades. I emailed the student back and said, you, you get feedback on everything you turn in. So it's not about being right all the time. Life is not about being right all the time. It's about growing. Wait, why are we making a podcast again? Because we like to watch movies and yell about them. They yell about directors, yell about the plot, yell about the acting, but they also talk a lot. But mostly Josh and Cassie, yeah, about the movies. Hey, everybody. I'm Cassie. And I'm Josh. And we are the hosts of the brand new podcast, Josh and Cassie Yell About Movies. Each week, we're breaking down a different film and sharing our unique perspectives and holding nothing back. And fair warning, this is a spoiler-heavy podcast, so yeah, just be aware of that, please. Do we make jokes? Is there anything else? Gosh, I hope so. I have fun laughing at you. Well, thanks. And we yell about movies, is that right? (laughs) That's right. We upload new episodes on Tuesdays, so hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. Well, first of all, when did you make this decision? This was prior to the beginning of um, this this school year. Yeah, last summer. And then you had did you have to sell it to admin first, or how did that no. go? I no, they just were like, "Great, I'm already the weird grader. I'm already the weird teacher." So okay, I okay. <laughs> so they were happy. They weren't worried that they're going to be getting all these phone calls from parents saying uh, and how many I guess this question is is important ish Um, how many other chemistry teachers are there in your school Uh, yeah that's huge so I am the only one Uh Mm -hmm. okay all my classes okay uh, which yeah that would be very this is something you would need to be on a team yeah if you're on on a team the team needs to the team needs to buy it I was just thinking that I'm like if I did this in my school there'd be so much pushback against the other teachers teaching the same thing Yes. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's definitely, um, a challenge. So full disclosure, boys and girls, like I, I've heard various other people talk about going gradeless and da, da, da. And, um, um, Johanna and I are, um, Twitter friends. And then she said, Hey, I'm having this thing where I'm going to be talking about, um, uh, ungrading or going gray list, but whatever words you want to, um, choose to use it. I guess there's a couple different ones that people use and it's going to be for science teachers. I'm like, okay, well, I teach math. I don't teach science, but she's really cool. And I think I might want to have her on the podcast too. So, um, let me like go to this thing. Cause, but I'm also thinking, I'm like, I'm like, cause I'm thinking maybe I can try this. And I've done some things which are kind of innovative in my school and I've been able to do it and I've gotten permission. So I, like, I'm thinking seriously about possibly next year doing this. But trying to figure out how it's going to work and how I'm going to have a conversation with my principal to go, hey, this is the next thing that I want to try. And what do you think about this? And I'm actually trying to push to get on our district's grading policy committee to talk about um, things, you know, how we can do things differently. Um, because this is one thing that's happened recently in our school district. And I know you've had people just scream from the rafters about it. They we bottomed out at 50 and I have no idea how common that is anymore but i and i i keep explaining to my fellow teachers like why does a kid get a 50 for doing nothing i'm like well why would you give a kid 60 points for barely doing anything and then subtract you would subtract why is the difference between like a c and a d 10 points and the difference between a d and and a zero 60 points i'm like this is that's ridiculous you know you talk to be on the one and the zero i'm like at, at minimum i'm said no, you need cheap- to make them feel their shame I, I guess it is like a minimum that has kids learn. Right. I'm like, but somehow I'm like, I, I, I've explained this to him and this is just kind of like somewhere in the happy medium. Like I said, listen, if you fail a class, you get a zero. And if you get an A, you get a four and you average those two classes together. Mm-hmm. You're at a 2.0. I said, but if I, you've got a hundred on a test and you don't do the other test, you average those together. You're now at a 50 and you've now failed the class. Why, why is, why is that not a C? When it's, when it's a C at the, at the end of the year. So because those aren't the numbers I'm used to. And the things that I knew growing up are right. <laughs> oh, I forgot that. Mr. Dad. Potato Head's a male. <laughs> That's true. He is. Who was this like is. that when I was growing up. It's correct. Yes. Yes. If I came back when I was in my 30s. It's wrong. Yes. It's and listen, Swift. potato ends in an O and the Spanish... Um, male is O, so if, if, if that's, potato has to be well, male. The okay. it was, right. It was a, if it was a female, it'd be potato. <laughs> <laughs> Problem Senorita solved. Potato. Yes, yes. I've, I've just. You say potato. Yes. 
<laughs> All right. Just th- so, okay. A, a lot of, I've talked to other districts that have done that, the mm-hmm. 50 thing. Mm-hmm. And man, I just struggle with. Is that the, the gateway drug to grade list? No, I don't. Okay. I don't think so. I think you're. I think that that forces people to dig in. It makes people think that being gradeless then doesn't work. So a, t- a teacher like you who who sees the the sense in the idea of right. not super failing students in a pandemic it will buy in and be like, okay, this makes sense and I can work it. But I think it makes teachers just dig in and say, we're not being hard enough on these students. They're getting away with things. They do nothing and get half of the points and say, well, so I, I worry about those actually making people not believe in trying something more progressive and mm-hmm. thinking that students won't work. I, I do want to say students learn. I have all this data for my students and how they feel and how much they actually think they're trying to learn things to learn them instead of just get it done and mm-hmm. puke it back up on a test. Right. And the, it, it can, it can be done. I, I was kind of like, oh, great. This, it looks interesting, but only English teachers can do that. Like there's no way we could ever do that chemistry. And I just, I'm happy I tried it because it really can be done. And I would say the same number, if not a little bit more of students are honestly trying consistently than in a normal graded time. So it seems like you kind of give your kids like lots of different options of of what to tackle and let them kind of work and struggle at at things of their choice. Is that, is that accurate from what I'm understanding? Or is there like a Um, lesson of the day or lesson of the week? On some things. Yeah, we do. We do. I uh, do a lot of POGO. So I write activities. It's process oriented guided inquiry learning. So Boom. they're in groups. An acronym. Yay. Ah, Drink. I do have some LaCroix here. So, um, <laughs> they're in these roles, right? I love giving them roles so they can't, you know, everybody has their job. And what I do is I, I confront them with models. So they get data or they get some sort of picture or something. They have to explore that and they, they then create a concept through the guided inquiry questions that I've written to help them develop. Like I had them do one where they looked at tests on diamond and graphite and they just learned about covalent bonding and graphite conducts electricity, but they don't expect anything that's covalent to be able to conduct electricity. They only think metallic bonds can conduct electricity. And so they're seeing this and they're seeing all the data and they're freaking out and they're trying to come up with explanations. And then they like get to see the actual structure and they know how it works. And so they do a lot of that in teams where I'm jumping around and they have stop signs at questions where I can see if they, have a misconception or not. So they call me in. So that's what they do a lot. We also do Pear Deck and some things together. Mm -hmm. Um, But then their asynchronous stuff is where I want them to. I just saw when we went fully asynchronous last spring, they didn't know that they could stop. You know, students don't believe that an assignment is good unless it's all done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so helping them know. And I, I will say, if you take longer than 20 minutes on this, you need to, like, I have to tell that to AP Chem, especially do not spend two hours. It means that you're missing some information and you need to just meet with me for 10 minutes. Right. And they really need that help. They think something's wrong with them and all of their peers are doing great. And it's just not true. Yeah. 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 With everything that's happening with uh, uh, remote learning, I did tell my students this year, I'm like, look, guys, no homework this year. If you don't finish it in class, stop. Just yeah. at the end of the day, go home, get some rest, play some video games, drink a chocolate milk, be a kid. <laughs> Right. Like, definitely. Th- your definitely. year is hard enough. You don't need to write an essay at home. Yes. I hope that more and more teachers are, are, are getting that because the, um, you know, we see it on Twitter and, and people do it. And I, I had teachers that did when I was a kid. I, I know teachers are at um, my school who have done it. They give the kid a packet over Christmas break or, and mm-hmm. I'm like, what in the world is wrong with you? What kind of nonsense is, is this? And, um, it's really the, a question of how much do you think they can do the night before Christmas break ends? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so January here's first, right before they come back in January. 2nd. <laughs> and here's the thing that, that, that I had to learn. Cause I, I, I was this way when, when, um, when I first became a teacher about, about 10 years ago, I was, I remember having this conversation with, um, my former principal about the fact that I'm like, and I actually said this to her, which probably was like an inappropriate thing to say, but I guess I was just, whatever was yeah. like, yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> like, do you not care? about the people that leave this school and say they graduated from this school and whether or not they've learned anything or not. Mm. <laughs> Did they like that? Did they appreciate it? Well, they're like, well, I'm con- changing my policy now, Amelia. You've made me see the light. No, they, they helped me like a little bit to you see. argue with on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, here's the deal that, that well, I've come to. And, argument. Thank and you, I still you. have this, I have this conversation with, with, um, <laughs> 
kids. Now the other inappropriate thing. Oh my god, I said this. Oh god, to this go. We were we were at a at a faculty meeting. It was it was the opening day faculty meeting at, at I don't know about other schools. We always have all the teachers in the auditorium. Principal is going to give us like a two hour. Oh, just just blech, uh, yep. just dumping data and plans no. and everything they can Let's just look at all the results from last year, last past. year and no. and grand no. vision for this year and all, just and nine hundred things. And so one of the things this principal this principal um uh says is like because our school was is like I don't know sixty seventy years old whatever it is and she puts up this number that's insane and it's a large school also that like I don't know one hundred and fifty thousand people have graduated or two hundred fifty thousand whatever it was it's this giant number have graduated from um this school and I turn to my colleague next to me and I go yeah and half of them can read. <laughs> Graduated shouldn't be in quotation marks, right? <laughs> but, but anyway, um, it's but funny because the American school system's failing. Yes, it is. Um, when, I, when I think about that, the students who can't read, who who come to your class and they, they've been relying on like algorithms to get through math and just yes. seeing what they do. I, like Tiffany Haddish talks about this in her book. She did not. She got into ninth grade. She did not know how to read, and finally, a teacher mm-hmm. was like wait a second, you're really smart and you have all of these intense systems to cover it up. Like she was yes. getting out to go. Anyway, but if we can help that student instead of just bringing them forward and checking the boxes and saying, you've done chemistry, check, they would actually know how to do many more things right. than this march of death to put and that's And that's head. what I was going to say. We We need to see ourselves as, I was going to sound all like cheesy and hokey, but as facilitators of learning as opposed to a gatekeeper to the next thing. Cause, cause that's what we used to be. <laughs> right. Like, like, no, it's true. Like we were right. trained or not, maybe not immediately, but like the people who trained, the people who trained us were In the right. days before the internet. I'm giving you Hamlet because I have the copy of Hamlet and I can tell you what it means. And you guys can't figure it out on your own. Right. And there's right. nobody else to ask. Yeah. Yeah. But Google. Yeah. Right. But now it's, but that's, that's what I've realized. So that's what I say to like some of my fellow teachers. I'm like, I said, just by the, by the way, if this kid happens to graduate with a 1.0, why are you mad about that versus wanting to like fail them and make them stick around another year where they're going to probably not learn that year either. And they're just going to be angry, you know, unless they end up in some class where something wonderful happens, which is, which hopefully could admin knows how to play the game too. Admin's going to go, okay, well, I guess I'll have to put them in this class where I know this teacher will pass them. So whether they learn or not as well, because that teacher not only does they not care about learning, they don't care about gatekeeping either. They're just, they're just riding it out till, um, retirement. So that game is being played all around us as well. And there's, there's so many ways to get the kid across the stage. So, you know, we do want to do all that we can to, I'll let you, um, jump off on this. I think, cause I think you'll agree. Cause some people are saying, well, the kids that aren't, what about the kids that aren't going to do any work? But that's already happening, whether they're gradeless or there's grades. Yes. So but that's yeah. the thing is, will there be less or more kids working? Not what about the kids that won't do any work. It's like there's already kids not working. Will this make more kids work or less kids work? So just personally with my 140 students, I'm seeing more wrong answers. Okay. Yeah. Versus copied. Ah. versus like hey what'd you get more honest wrong answers with better explanations okay okay overall and it's really interesting because i'm like oh i always thought i was really good at teaching that but maybe i'm not (laughs) 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 which is good it's like okay we need to fix this let's right right something different um I would say two, I've, I've changed a couple other things. I'm doing a lot more relevant stuff. Like our whole bonding unit was based on the Artemis mission and how do we design materials to go to space? Uh, and so I had a lot of students just be more excited. So I think this is coupled with trying to just do things that, that makes students work because they don't think of it as just this labor. It's like, Oh, I do kind of want to know what fuels a rocket booster to space. That seems kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Even if they don't get it it's all, Elon but. Musk's blood. Okay, <laughs> that's what it's running on. <laughs> I hear, yeah, I hear he gets it replenished every yes. day. Yes, children, or I don't know. Will, and now that, Here's that but now from now on, though, it's going to just run on Dogecoin. I think is what is how and NFTs was how the rockets will get into space. <laughs> is that right, Tedisco? Uh, hundred uh, <laughs> percent. 
All right, so all this is actually making me think about something. So, Amelia, you've actually brought this up before. We were talking about, you know, uh, teaching kids virtually during this pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I remember you were had some colleagues of yours, math, uh, math teachers, complaining that oh, it's going to be so easy for the kids to cheat on the test. Right. Mm. And I remember you said something along the lines of, if you're making a test that they can just Google, then maybe the test is wrong. Yeah. So, uh, Joanna, how do you handle kids who, like, are cheating or are trying to, like, just steal something from Google? And not thinking for themselves. Like, how do you get them to sort of, like, put that faith in themselves and to, like, actually think for themselves and, like, kind of break that whole, like, I just need to Google and answer mindset? Yeah. Um, we, we do talk about that all the time. Like, you're here to learn how to think and communicate and collaborate. So let's do that. So I have this thing. It's just a Google Doc, but we call it their thinking document. And they put in things they've learned. They I have reflection questions that they do. And... At the beginning of the year, I did have it turned on where Google auto checks if anything is from the internet. Mm-hmm. And so I, I saw that a lot at the beginning of the year. And then I just ask students about it and we'd talk and I'd say, I do not, I, do, I can read things on Google. I want to read you and your thoughts, please. Yes. Like they, and, and they, it takes so long to build that trust. Mm-hmm. You yeah. talk about, I know other teachers want you to have the right thing. Yeah. They don't. You don't need to be right all the time. So it takes a long time to get them to trust you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, that, that really helped at the beginning of the year having a way. And I don't love all this monitoring software software. I had a colleague email all the teachers and say, Hey, who knows about some, some software I can get for a lockdown test. And I similarly said, could I convince you to find a different way to test students yeah. knowledge than yeah. a yeah. lockdown browser? But mm-hmm. yeah, it was literally an issue at our school. Um, we were giving midterms, right? And the kids who were in person felt disadvantaged. Mm-hmm. And yes. it was like, and it was blowback from parents even that were apparently writing emails and going, what are you doing about this? Because my son's in person and he's going to be going against kids that are da 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 da. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, I'm yeah. like told in my kids at the midterm, I'm like, it's an open note test, so so mm-hmm. whatever. And, I, and all my tests and since the pandemic, honestly, have been um, open note. And I, you know, I like have them show work and do all that kind of stuff as well. And I also, this is my way of ungrading or whatever. And shh, don't tell people that I did this because I might get. I guess I get in trouble for this. I don't know if it is good. You tell me. I told my kids this year that they're all seniors. I said, um, so the midterm is going to be open note. I have to give you midterm. I'm, I'm required to give a midterm and put in a grade. And here's my curve for the midterm. If you have a seventy five now. And you get an 85 on the midterm, I'm putting an 85 in for the midterm. If you get a 65, I'm putting a 75 in for the midterm. So that, like, whatever I said, your mm-hmm. grade can go up, it can't go down. So just relax when you take the midterm and do your, and do your best. And it's, 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 you know, and it's not exactly what you're doing, but it's one of those things where I'm like, why, if this kid has been doing all they can do, why am I all of a sudden going to, like, say, this one day, I'm going to make this one crucial thing completely annihilate your grade just mm-hmm. because that's that's what that's what we do. That's silliness. I would have kids, like, I'd give them the, the math format. We would do math in my English class between the quarters. And I'd say, like, all right, write down what you got for last quarter, and now think about the grade you want at the end of the year, and now let's figure out about how well you're probably going to do on the test, right? Based on like your other tests, all right? Here's where the final's going to be. So what do you have to get this quarter? What's your average to get the grade that you want at the end? And like, we calculate it all out. Like, I don't, yeah. you, you shouldn't be surprising kids. Like if a kid fails, <laughs> they should know why. Yeah. <laughs> And you that's know, back it, to the 50 thing. I would say teachers, I, even before the, the 50s became a thing, I would give my kids like, if they, whatever they had for the first quarter, I'm giving them, we, we, we're on semesters, um, here, and I would give them like a 55, cause I'm like, they would, I'd have teachers that would leave their kids grade at like a 23. I'm like, you realize they have to get like a 97 for the second quarter to pass your class, and that's virtually impossible, particularly for a kid who got a 23 for the first quarter. So there's no reason for them to do anything at all. Why would you do that? You know, I'm like, at least if I do, if I put them here, then I tell the kid, Hey, all you need to do is get like a 65 here. And then you're going to, then you're, then you're going to pass. And I I realize we're getting Mm -hmm. back into the grading system versus the grade list system. But, um, but I think there's a lot of different ways to, I I think that whether you're going grade lists or whether you're doing that, we constantly need to be reflecting on why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing it. And how is it, again, facilitating learning versus like trying to keep a kid from moving on to the next thing? Yeah. And I really think ungrading or being gradeless is just one version to mm-hmm. get students learning 
in, and de-emphasizing grades. And sometimes I think, especially when things get a title, like, oh, I'm ungrading this year. People think it's like being a vegan. Like if you then eat one piece of cheese, like <laughs> you can't count as a vegan anymore. Oh. So uh, ungrading is you, you can grade some things. You could do an ungraded unit. You can just do reassessments. Like mm-hmm. there are so many things you can do. You don't have to have this whole label and think that it has to be this production that meets all of these things. Do what works for your students and try right. de-emphasizing grades somehow. Sunday, 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 June 27th. Join us for Edupod Luza. There will be over a dozen Edupodcasters. Listen for some rhythm and rhyme. That's a poetry slam, boys and girls. Roundtable discussion. Just some teachers talking about teaching and laughing and having a good time. Role-playing games. Oh, yeah. For you nerds out there, you know you're going to like that stuff. Radio drama. Dum-dum-dum-dum. And really funny people. At least really funny looking, if nothing else. 1 to 9 on June 27th, Eastern Standard Time. We'll be live streaming. There'll be links. We'll put it on the Twitter. We'll make sure that you know where it is. Follow us at Unprocast if you're not already, because that's probably going to be the easiest way to know when it's going live. June 27th. Free up your calendar now. Thank you. I know we want to get to to funny stories in the classroom, because we always love funny stories, but... Uh, uh, if there's somebody who's really interested in this, who like he- hears all this ungrading stuff and is like really into it, can you suggest anything to them? Are there any uh, like resources that that you've used that that really have helped you, and, and yeah. you would suggest oh. to others? Oh, she ran away, boys and girls. I ran away. I scared to her my away. bookshelf. Okay, this, yes. I love this book. The editor is on Twitter, Susan Bloom, B L U M, and and. She's extremely accessible and it's about half uh, higher ed, half secondary practicing teachers wrote each chapter. So they're all written by teacher, different teachers. So if you kind of just want to see what other people are doing and how it's working and how they think about easy to read. Okay. Ungrading. And the link will be in the in the show notes, boys and girls. So you just scroll on the thing that you're listening to, click on it, and it'll take you right to that. Okay, cool. And I have, a, I have a Google Doc of some of my favorite resources and people to follow on Twitter, and I can send that to you. Okay, that'll work yeah. as well. Yes, that that would be, be really, really cool. Check for that in the show notes, too. Yes, yeah. So, no, you don't have to do that. But, you know, but we do want a funny story. So whether it's a going gradeless funny story or, um, you know, a kid um, – drank the um you know iodine um story or whatever, no. whatever. or funny story from your your time uh with, yeah, the, with adults. the adults yes well I, here's what came to mind is just this week i had made a tiktok video about nice. how you can use this this um tea it's this blue tea it's made out of butterfly pea flowers and it's intense what blue. and it's made out of, add, pause like, one second it's made out of butterfly pea Flowers? P-E-A. P-E-A. Oh, okay. So not butterfly. Uh, well, I figure, I figure yeah, butterflies pee. Get your brain out of the you butterfly like, I figure the, the, the butterflies, butterflies are peeing blue. I, that's, you know, like... milking the butterfly. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Butterfly pea it's flowers. Just really, it's blue. It's blue. When you put acid in it, it turns magenta. When you put base in it, it turns green. And, like, everybody loves a good color change. Yes. Yes. And my friend's a kindergarten teacher, and I've been sending videos to her kid. He'll ask science questions, and I respond to videos to him. And she's like, you have to get on TikTok or something. Like, this is funny. And I was, so yes. I made this little video. And then I have a, I had a student who I've had for a couple of years, and he calls me over in class on Monday, and he says, Miss Brown. And he always says Miss Brown like the world is ending, even uh-huh. if he's excited. And, and he asks me a serious question about class and figuring something out. And uh, he had said, I have two questions. He goes, so number two. And he talks very loud. And so do I. And there's only eight people in our <laughs> high grade class. So everybody's just listening to us. Right. And he says, are you on TikTok? And everybody just stops where you're like, at this point, no, everyone's yes. just listening to us. I was like, we hear yeah, the I 80s just... record scratch. Yes. Yes. He's like, I know. So I said, yeah, I just, I just posted a video. I thought it was fun. He said, I don't like it. Like, Why don't you like it? He's like, that's, that's like, you are too old to be on nice. TikTok. Right? Yes. But the, all the other students chime in. They're like, no, this is cool. Like they're into it. So they all have to find it 
then they say you need to make an AP Chem TikTok. Like you just need to make a channel. You start doing tips. Like we're gonna make you go viral. Like Miss Brown, this is the this is the most exciting thing we've talked about. And my everybody's just yes. losing it. So then I just started making tip videos on TikTok for all the students prepping for the AP Chem exam. And I'm nice. getting little messages like, "Oh, look, now you have 32 followers." And, and so oh wow, 32. You're you're, is, you're, you're 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 a TikTok sensation, huh? Like, do you look know at my Twitter? Do you know how to hit the whoa? Oh, I, I have been, I have appeared in a hitting the low TikTok video a couple years ago. Okay. That's, that's what I say, say to sound cool now. I, actually, that's what I say to say cringe, I, I, to, to, to make kids cringe. I'm like, I'm going to hit the well right now, kids, you know? So, cause my daughter told me it now, now, like I, I, I say it. So, but I don't know why that reminded me of this. So here's some chemistry that, 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 that doesn't work. Well, it's barely chemistry, I think. Okay. So back in my, um, wild and crazy days on, um, St. Patrick's Day, many a, uh, establishment will serve green beer. Yes. Okay. So me and my friends, this was our plan. They said, how much green beer do we have to drink until we do what to disco? <laughs> until we pee until green. Pee green. That was the goal. Yes. I'm here to let you know that that's, I think this is a biology thing. There's very little green dye in the, um, in the green beer, and you won't be curse your functioning kidneys. Yes, you will. <laughs> you will ruining you will, your fun. Yes, you will. You will be in a hospital before you pee green. Is is the is the is the answer? I think to, to that. Well, we all um, learned something. Science question. Yes. And you see, and you weren't graded on that, but I, you did an I, experiment I, on your I own, and you learned. Said, I'm just I'm, yes, I'm I'm going back and see if it's green. Nope, it's not. Oh well, drink some more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While we're talking about alcohol and chemistry, I have a question yes. for you. Yeah. So I've Ooh. never taken chemistry in my life. What? Never took chemistry. Oh, then I have a funny chemistry teacher mean story. Okay, that I'll tell you in here in a second. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, chemistry teachers are either the best or the worst. No, I we were mean. Word. We were mean to her. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. okay. Go ahead. With a lot of science classes, like most science classes, it comes down to who your teacher is. Yes. The content is what it is. So. Yes. Okay. So there's an alcoholic drink. It's called Ada. It's a Middle Eastern alcohol. It's um, anise based. Oh, so it's mm-hmm. a clear like liquor Uzo or something, right. right? It's a clear liquor like vodka. Mm-hmm. But when you add water, it turns milky white. Ooh. Oh, do you have any idea why that happens? Something in there is more soluble in the alcohol than in water, and uh. so. And so it's precipitating out. Mm. So something's forming some solids. Okay. Interesting. Okay. okay. I do remember that from chemistry precipitate. But yes. there's water in the drink because I assume it's not. I mean, what's the proof? Um, A million. High. It's about as much as Sambuca. Not super high. Okay. Okay. Probably like 70 proof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's my guess. There's something nonpolar in there or some... Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Soluble, other yep. science words. Got Precipitate. It. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, Precipitate. Butterfly pee. Butterfly pee. I'm following. Those are your best That's, words. I mean, <laughs> I would drink, like, if there was a blue liquid in the cooler at the convenience store that said butterfly pee, I would, I would, I would buy that and drink it. Okay. Yeah, of course I would. Um, so this is, this is why I love teachers telling things because it always tells me to random funny stories that I have somehow stored 8,000 of them in my brain. So we were in school. So this is me as a student and we had good gravy that I can remember the lady's name it was Julia Mayer, M-A-H-E-R. I'm guessing she's gone on to the great chemistry lab in the sky. I don't know because it's over 30 years ago. She was not old, old, but may, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I know she's not listening, but, um, so I went to, speaking of, of what a poor student I was, I was a poor student in middle school. My parents sent me to a private school for a couple of years and wasted 10000 of their dollars over two years to try and straighten me out. It didn't, it didn't work. Um, and nope, you're so, still quite crooked. Yeah, but <laughs> I am. Um, so it was all boys, and she was a female teacher in an all-boys class, and she just didn't know how to um, deal with a bunch of 10th grade immature idiots. So the first thing we did, and I've had this come back on me, was hum. I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you or been in a class where you did it. So there's like, you know, there's 25 kids in the class. So one kid starts. 
Mm, your mouth's not moving. You can't tell who's something. Mm, and then, like, another kid does it. Mm. And so what the next thing she does, of course, is she's, like, going to circulate around the class to figure out who's humming. As she gets near you, you just stop. But a kid further away from her does start humming. And then she goes, she thinks, okay, it's that kid over there. She goes over there. And then, then, and then mm, you're back over here. And it woman. is. My kids did it. I, my second year of teaching and they did ooh, like, they're, like like that and it lasted probably about a month and it was sheer oh torture because you have two choices you can me by just unmuting their Chromebooks in class because they're still on the Zoom in my classroom because I have to teach the kids at home and in class yes. and they'll just unmute so I can hear my voice echoing throughout the classroom but I can't figure uh, out who it is nice. they think it's hilarious it is hilarious, that's a good one that's a is good it? one is yes. it Mealy? It is. It is. <laughs> See, the other thing was in that class, we had a game with Skittles where there was very, she taught like, it was like back in the day when like the, um, the science teacher had like this big lab table at the front, like mm-hmm. that was up high and literally like you had to like walk up to get to where her, like, like two steps to get up to where her spot was. So there was like a sink there and there was like another thing somewhere. And so the, there were like different spots where you could get points for throwing your Skittles and getting them in the sink or whatever. So that was like the game that we played. And then we had Bunsen burners and they had these little, um, I guess it was okay for kids to have asbestos back then because we had these little oh, yeah. screens with like asbestos in the thing that you would put the um the beaker on top mm-hmm. of on top of the Bunsen mm-hmm. burner. Explains a and, lot about you, Mealy. Yes. Yes. I'm Just full. burn asbestos. I'm full of asbestos. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Burn asbestos for kids. Smell And like, then smell. kids go play in traffic. Exactly. Exactly. So what did we do? Nothing is feels so wonderful as calling the teacher by their first name when you, once they mm-hmm. figure out your first name they just think they're like oh hey william and they're like hey johanna and it's just like it's just yeah. they, they they think that they've done something to you somehow they've won mm-hmm. some game it's like, so oh, that's my name <laughs> right yes congratulations it's like literally on the website and on your <laughs> on your on your schedule yes um so but we took a pen and so the asbestos was like, like on like a little screen, like you have like a screen in your, in your window, but it was like, like a little four by four. We took a pan and poked out all the squares. So it spelled Julia on the asbestos, um, <laughs> thing there. And then the last thing we did was they have those like, sinks with the real, s- yes, they have the sinks with the real, s- I don't know why, why do science classes have those spigots that come to like a weird cone shaped point? What is the science reason behind that? You know what I'm talking about? No, mine aren't like that. Wait, oh. are you talking about for the gas and stuff, or for the for water? For water. Oh, like the the levers? No, like the, the the nozzle. I don't know. It was shaped exactly. Speaking of the gas for the um, Bunsen burner. for the Bunsen burner. So we would hook it up. It was probably the, just cheap. It's just the same one. They just bought them in bulk. I have no idea. But we would hook the Bunsen burner up to the um faucet. And then um, turn the faucet on and turn the Bunsen burner into a fountain, and it would just squirt like water out of um, the the skinny hole in the Bunsen burner. Yeah, it was it was um, that class. I can't remember a single thing. Of, yeah, we had some stoichiometry in there too, but but I know I, I know we did a whole lot of that. Okay, wow. but, this is uh, why it's it's life and death to make your science class interesting. Like you need to be more interesting than humming. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like, like for the good of all. Oh yes. Alrighty. Wait, you want to plug Edupod Loser before we get out of here? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's. So Edupod Loser, Johanna, and everyone else, June twenty seventh from one p.m. to nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time for all you Idahoans that are going to be Johanna's friends that are going to be listening to this podcast. We are going to have at least I don't know ten to fifteen education podcasters. So if you don't know other education podcasts besides this one, because this is the best one, um, and we're going to have just so much fun. We're going to do a role playing game. We've got a radio script where we're doing a live table read of a of a drama that takes place in school, and there's going to be zombies. Um, spoiler alert! And we're going to have games, um, spoken word, um, like poetry slam, um, round table discussions about education and podcasting and education podcasting and whatever else we decide to, to talk about. And I don't know what else it's just, it's just going to be, it's, it's going to be a, a ton of fun and, and wild and crazy. And it's going to live stream, um, on, um, 
Twitter and YouTube and I don't know wherever else, wherever else we can, wherever else the kids are streaming, um, as long as we can figure out all that stuff between now and June 27th. So yes, thank you for reminding me to this go. Got yes. your back. Yes. Alrighty. Was well, there anything else you wanted to share with us or tell us or anything about ungrading that we didn't cover that you wanted to mention? No, I think I think I'm good. That was so fun. Okay, this was this was a blast. Thank you, thank you, thank time. you so much. We really, really appreciate you, and we I feel like we had a good time, and we learned just just like you know, and everyone who listened to this podcast, you get a ten. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> not a ten. Exactly. Yep, yep. And if you listen to any of the other, confused. if you listen to any of other other episodes, you get a one. If, uh, until then, you get a zero on those. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. You're still gonna. You're still gonna... confused, and then stop. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that might not take very long. Um, but anyway, we just thank you guys. And if we always say at the end, stay unprofessional. Thanks for listening, Unprofessionals. Please check the show notes for more information about our guests and just funny links for other things. And here's a little sample of next week's episode. Work in, that's what it's like to work in the New York City tri-state area. There were many times that as a, you know, there were the concerts at school. There were the weekend performances of all the plays. I mean, how mm-hmm. many times can I watch Little Mermaid Jr. over and over? Oh. And, and it just doesn't get better with each of the five shows. No. But nonetheless, you're there. You're encouraging. You're smiling. And my brothers would fill in for my kids' birthday parties with, with my wife. And I'm like, thanks, guys. At least we look at like the photos will Tell much different. There we go. <laughs> no, before Photoshop. Right. But, you know, speaking of uh, uh, being an administrator at one of the the school shows, I got to tell you a great story. You know, whenever you go to these shows, they always do like the 50-50 raffles running by the PTA. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, of course, you know, here I am. And I'm like, you know, administrator in charge. So I'm like, okay, here's my $20. And you, you put it in. And next thing you know, during ha- the intermission, the PTA president gets up there and says, okay, well, we're going to announce the 50-50 raffle now. And it's like $1,200. So the winner gets 600 bucks. And, you know, of course, everybody's wishing for it. And they call my name. Nice. And, and it's awesome. And I'm sitting there and with my wife right next to the superintendent and his wife in the middle of the theater. And I go up. And, of course, what does an administrator have to do? Put that money Put back, back, baby. Thank you. Put that back. You know, it's really nice. I sit back. And beyond the fact that my wife is kicking me in the knee, like, really? Seriously? $600? That would have been nice. Super, the superintendent whispers to me and goes, you know, you're supposed to at least say, give me my 20 back and you can keep the rest. <laughs> See, I got the solution. Okay. And no one can go back. So next time that happens, if it ever happens again, you look at your wife and you go, I'm finally getting you that diamond that we never got when we got married and we're going out to dinner. And everyone, everyone goes, oh, good for you. And then, right, and, then right. and then, and then you, and then you, and <laughs> wishful thinking on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, note to self next time, just don't, don't acknowledge when they call out your number. This sh- <laughs> and we're going to go to the next ticket winner. I guess this person is in the bathroom or left. <laughs> yes. That, that you could do that too. Um, it's funny. I, I used to work, um, a long time ago for.